in 5, 4, 3, 2. Ayan na. Nakalagyan natin ang background ng IFNG. Ayan. Hello everybody! Welcome to our weekly live stream with Elite Intellect. Today we are graced by the presence of our ever almighty, ever almighty of our of our ever blooming. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So I think Sir Manuel got disconnected. Hello everyone. Welcome back here at the live of IFNG. How's everybody doing? Okay, guys. So again, this is the weekly live of Elite Intellect live here at IELTS Philippine Nurses Group. Okay, so guys, <clears throat> while we're waiting for Sir Manuel to come back, for those of you guys who are watching on Facebook, please do share this live to your friends because tonight we were we will be learning about grammar. Okay, so we're, it is grammar for writing. One of the most important things that you would need to learn for you to prepare yourself better on the examination. And of course, for those of you guys here at our Zoom um, on our Zoom live, guys. If you have any questions, okay, feel free to ask me later on during our discussion. Okay, for now, <clears throat> let me just share this uh live video to our friends right now at Elite Intellect, okay, and as well as the other. Okay, so guys, yeah, if you have for those of you who are um who are aiming, okay, to get a 7.0 on speaking, okay, uh, on writing, guys, please let me know, okay, who among you are aiming to get a 7.0 in writing, okay, say I do, come on. All right, well, I'm sharing this video right now, okay, Rad, thank you so much, okay, who else? Okay, so let me just share this one. Okay, <clears throat> there we go. All right, good. Okay, so we do have Mila, Red, Julian. Okay, Jewel, Julian, Christian. Okay, Casey, JG, and SSSSS. I love your name. There's a lot of S's in your name. Okay, all right, Daisy on Facebook. Okay, so guys, keep on sharing this live video because I do feel like we're going to be helping a lot of students right now, especially those who are having problems when it comes to grammar and writing, okay? Basically, I'm not going to be talking about all the grammar rules, okay? These are the magic grammar rules that you, were, that you will need for you to get that target score on the examination, okay? So you may tag your friends right there at the comment section here at IFNG so that, uh, what do you call this, your friends could actually attend our live discussion for tonight. Okay, so let me just share this one on Facebook and we shall start. And ito? Mama D, skincare reveal. Skincare reveal, water and prayers. <laughs> okay. All right, guys, by the way, <clears throat> later on, you're going to be getting a handout of our discussion for tonight for grammar, okay? So for those of you who, who would want to get a handout of our discussion tonight here, okay, at IFNG, what you can do is you may add, uh, you may actually like IFNG on Facebook, okay? And of course, message the admin so that they will be able to add you to the group chat because they will be forwarding the PDF version of our discussion for tonight. Okay, so let me just share my PowerPoint to everyone one okay <clears throat> excuse me guys sorry all righty so welcome to another fun discussion fun and informative discussion about grammar for writing brought to you by ielts filipino nurses group and of course elite intellect line for those of you guys who who just attended our live session tonight we will be talking about grammar and the things that entails uh grammar for writing the things that you would need okay for you to get that 7.0 and above when it comes to the writing examination and of course i always tell my students for you to aim higher on the exam okay what i would want you to remember just aim for a 7.0 because it will make you relax too much on the test, okay? What I always tell my students when they are preparing for their IELTS examination is that you should be aiming for an 8.0 or a 9.0 for writing so that if ever you do not get the 9.0 for writing, you can still get the 8.5, okay? All right. Okay, Sir Manuel was disconnected. That's okay, Sir Manuel. Okay, guys. All right, so 
Welcome, guys, to our discussion for tonight, and let's enjoy our grammar discussion. But before we begin, okay, let me just take this opportunity for me to, okay, congratulate, okay, congratulations, Sir Jeffrey of IFNG, because his visa for the United States of America has already been approved. So, Sir Jeffrey has been um, our best supporter when it comes to IFNG, guys, ever since, right? He, he, he actually had the goal and the drive to help the students prepare better on their IELTS examination and hence explaining why we have IFNG right here. So we are pretty much happy that all our prayers already come, uh, came true and he already had his visa approved. So Sir Jeffrey, if you're watching this or if you're going to watch this later, congratulations. God is good. To God be the glory. You are blessed because finally... We are about to go to the next chapter of our journey here, okay, on our preparation. And of course, for those of you who are watching, you are next, right? Who's next? Who's, who's, who's going to be next to get their visa approved? Come on, guys. Sino? Sino? <laughs> From Mom Michelle. Congrats, Sir Jeff, na nangangamoy US dollars na. <laughs> Yes, diba? Ariana, anak ako. Yes, okay guys, in Jesus' name, okay, in Jesus' name, this year, okay, lahat ma-approve ang visa, okay? All right, <clears throat> remember this day, okay? We declare that everyone is going, everyone's visa will be approved this year and everyone will be going, okay, going towards their laurels and their evergreen state. Hello, Jarlene, 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 Jarlene is watching on Facebook. Hello. So I'll see you soon in Ordenera. Okay, I'll be there. You know, you tell the students our mama will be visiting the Ordenera branch. <laughs> okay, guys. <clears throat> So, if it's your first time, so again, Sir Jeffrey, congratulations. We are so happy, so proud of you. And of course, we are praying for um, we are praying for the new chapter of your life, okay, here at Elite Intellect. Okay, so if it's your first time to join us here at our live discussions, hello, I'm pleased to meet you. My name is Clint Joseph Tyler, the founder and master lecturer of Elite Intellect, IELTS OET, and Clicks and NMC CBT Specialist PH. I am an IELTS expert for the past 12 years and also known as your Mama Dragon, Mama D, Mother D, Mommy D, okay, or Mother Dragon. I am half Filipino, half cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> now he's starting. <laughs> no, I'm trying to make things. Pakipasok ang tagline. Okay, guys, by the way, <clears throat> our official hashtag for tonight, if you're watching us on Facebook, that is hashtag Mama D cares. Okay, again, that is hashtag Mama D cares. Kwentong ina, turong ina, alagang ina, matuto ka, ina ka. <laughs> 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 Ayan na, di ba? Nagsimula na. <laughs> okay, hello, girly. Okay, so for those of you guys on Facebook, Middle hello. Okay, there we go. So yeah, we are going to be learning a lot tonight with grammar, okay? Again, guys, on the examination, there are 892 grammar rules worldwide, okay? There are 892 grammar rules that you would need to master for you to be perfect when it comes to English. However, there's no such thing as perfect on the English language. Even the native speakers, they're not perfect when it comes to the language itself, right? So... <clears throat> What I have compiled here are the magic, okay, magic number, okay, or magic uh, grammar techniques that you should be mastering for the examination, which would be enough for you to get that, um, uh, which would be enough for you to get that 7.5 or 7.0 and above on the examination, okay? So, hello, we had 104 viewers on Facebook and 55 viewers at Zoom, okay? Let's keep those numbers up, okay? Hanggat di nyo sineshare yung ano dyan sa Facebook, di ako gagalaw. Cherry. <laughs> okay. Hello, Vivian. Hello, Mom Wilhelmina. There we go. Si Mom Wilhelmina, no passing the exam. Visa, Mom Wilhelmina. Okay. So, guys, let's learn about elite notes. Okay, let's talk about. Um, okay, but before that, okay, before that, important lesson first. <clears throat> Before anything else, Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name. For in perfect faithfulness, you have done wonderful things, things planned long ago. Okay, so if you are a person who you feel like 
things are not going according to your plan or things have a speed bump or delay with your plans, one thing that I would want you guys to remember is that the Lord is always faithful for the wonderful things that He is doing in your life and things have been planned, okay? way ahead of you okay way ahead of you you have to remember you're planning for an and just for for just one rose the lord is planning to give you a bouquet of roses okay or even not just a bouquet but a bigger one for that matter okay so guys always keep the faith always be in faith and remember to work towards your goals with the lord beside you okay so <clears throat> Let us now look at the grammar for writing, okay? Easier, fun, and systematic. After this discussion, you will love grammar. Okay. All right. So from, uh, from IELTS Filipinos, if you know someone who needs help with grammar, tag them now because hashtag Mama D cares. Yes, guys, itag nyo na yung mga kaibigan nyo na piling nyo kailangan ng grammar, okay? If, they, if you believe that they would need lessons when it comes to grammar, please do tag them because I, I, I do not, I do not uh, lecture with grammar oftenly. Okay, I think this happens only once every three months or four months here at IFNG that I talk about grammar, okay? <clears throat> All right, so do tag them now. Kakatawa, kakatawa ko. Ayan na naman, di ba? Inuubo na naman ako. <laughs> Okay, guys, so let me share my screen as regards our lesson for today, okay? Guys, grammar is a hated subject, okay? Grammar is a hated subject by a lot of test takers, okay? Do you mind telling me what do you think is the main reason why grammar is a hated subject of a lot of test takers? Okay, why do you think grammar is the most hated subject of the test takers okay why okay come on come on let's see i did to i know itagang x para makita niyang sinayang niya <laughs> nakakaloka ka siya <laughs> same here hinihika na ako sa kakatao si mom michelle from crivin off topic i love your new microphone mama d thank you so much thank you so much crivin anak asmr <laughs> Thank you, mga anak. Anita, this is the basta yan. Diba? Blessings ni Lord yan. Okay? All right. Daming rules. Yes. Okay. Yes, guys. No? Um, oh, oh, the ganda ng microphone. Yeah, just should. Ano ko ba kayo? Blessing ni Lord yan. Okay? God, you are good. Okay. Mahirap i-apply. Yes. Sometimes grammar is actually difficult to apply. Right? Uh, there are a lot of rules with which we second guess ourselves, right? When it comes to those rules, right? So who among you here has encountered that before? You are confident when it comes to your grammar capacity. But then again, once you start applying it, you try to second guess yourself. You'll be like, mm, is this one correct or this one incorrect? Okay. All right. What else? Sometimes we do inserts in our paragraphs. There you go, Josine. Okay. Confusing from Vivian. Okay. True. The agreement of subject and of subject and right verb to use. Hashtag Mama D cares. Miss you, Elite Team. Hello, Mom Zaya. Mom Zaya. We miss you here at our Elite Intellect Team. Okay. Oh my gosh. My daughter is watching. Subject verb agreement. Don't worry. I'm going to be teaching you guys that tonight. Don't miss that. Okay. All right. <clears throat> what else? Um, it is because when we talk, we are not minding it anymore. We just want to deliver the message the way that we want to express. English is not our ex expertise as well. Yeah, that's true. Sometimes we tend to be uh, insensitive when it comes to our grammar. So yeah. Not, not a lot of people have that inclination when it comes to grammar that every time that they say something, their mind automatically focuses to correcting what they say. Okay? Organization, subject verb agreement. Okay, yes. All of these are valid. Okay? All of these are valid. <clears throat> and we will be talking about those things tonight. Okay? If you're a person who's having a hard time knowing the difference between the rules of subject verb agreement, Okay, or if you do not know uh, what they call this, the rules when it comes to in on ad prepositions in on ad for time and place, tonight is the night. Okay, and we're going to be talking about the big four. Okay, the big four of grammar first. Okay, you get confused, and the more that you doubt yourself. Okay, <clears throat> there you go, Mom Zaya. <laughs> yeah, and you in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, your Mom Zaya will be back in the coaching room soon. <laughs> Okay, guys, so let's talk about grammar for the IELTS writing. Not just in writing, but you may also apply the things that you're going to be learning tonight with speaking. So let's talk about the first thing. Why is grammar important? Grammar is important because it is 25% of your final grades on the exam. Okay, 
That is 25% of your final grades in the exam. Meaning, okay, in writing, you will be graded upon your task accomplishment, your TA, your cohesion and coherence, your, your CC, your grammar, and your lexical resources, okay? And, okay, the thing is, if one of those skills that are, that are assessed on the examination is actually quite weak, uh, weak, okay, then, of course, there will be a problem with your grades, okay? You cannot select your favorites here. You would need to accomplish, uh, you would need to do your task accomplishment, you would need to accomplish the expectations with cohesion and coherence, with grammar, and also with lexical resources. And also, guys, if you, grammar is important because this can improve your English capabilities. Apart from that, your performance becomes academic quality on the examination. And let's face it, okay? The IELTS examination is an academic test, okay? It's not a basic English examination with which they're just going to be asking you and you would need to answer based on your, your feelings, right? Or your emotions or the way that you feel that day. Okay, so basically, guys, your performance on the examination would need to be academic quality, okay? And, okay, when you have commendable grammar, all of this entails a good um, test taker, okay? So let's talk about the big four, okay? Sir Joseph, the big four are too basic. I know what a noun is. I know what an adjective is. I know what a verb is. And I know what an adverb is, right? I know. I am aware of that, my children, but... Do you know the subtypes of these, okay? Because on the examination, you would need to utilize the subtypes of the nouns, the adjectives, the verbs, and the adverbs for you to create a coherent sentence on the examination. Okay, wait, we have a question. Sir, are we going to get a copy of this one? Yes. If you would want to get a copy of this one, please do like IFNG, okay? And also ask them uh, after liking IFNG later on after the class, um, ask the admins to add you on their group chat because this will be for Awarded on your group chat. For the elite students who are watching right now, don't worry, Mama will send it to your group chats later on, okay? All righty. <clears throat> okay, so what are the big four? Let's talk about this one, okay? The big four, you have the noun, adjectives, verbs, and adverbs. Let's talk about the nouns first. Okay, so basically, guys, oh, sorry. Basically, guys, by definition, nouns are the names of people, places, objects, and emotions, okay? <gasps> Sir Joseph, are you telling me that love is a noun? Yes, that's an emotion. Comfort is a noun? Yes, that's an emotion too. Compassion, is it a noun? Yes, that is emotion too, right? Whereas when you transform it to loving, then that becomes a verb, right? Okay, <clears throat> so guys, anything that is specified or generalized could be considered as a noun. Now, there are types of nouns, okay? First one is we do have what we call the common noun. So common nouns, guys, are non-specific, okay? When we say non-specific, it has not been specified. There's no specific brand. There's no specific person. There is no specific thing or object that is being stated here. An example of this one is book. What book, right? Table. What type of table? Is it a Norwegian minimalist chemi table? Or is it a Japanese chemi table? Or is it a tabletop something? Okay. Or teacher. Who's the teacher that is being mentioned here? Or friends, right? Those are common nouns. Whereas if these are proper nouns, guys, they will be specified. Okay. So let's say you have Joseph, right? Elite intellect. One thing that I would want you guys to remember for proper nouns is they should always be capitalized. Okay. When you are writing them down on the examination, be careful about this one. Okay. Be careful because I have seen students who have written down things like this before on the exam. Okay, there we go. They have written down California, albeit the word, the letter C in California has not been capitalized. So that is actually grammatically incorrect. Okay, you would need to be sensitive with this one when it comes to writing. Because one thing that I would want you guys to remember or to fathom or to recon is that in writing, it becomes technical. The, the, the examiners can see the things that you're writing down. So you would need to be extra careful with that one. Okay, so. Again, if these are proper nouns, you would need to capitalize them. Okay, so Joseph, what about abstract nouns, okay? All right, so when we say abstract nouns, guys, basically you cannot perceive it with your five senses, okay? You cannot perceive them with your five senses. You have freedom, love, 
courage, dream. Okay, basically these are ideas or emotions. Okay, so tell me if it is an abstract noun of, or if it's not an abstract noun. Okay, just type A if it's an abstract noun or B if it's not an abstract noun. Okay, um, faith. Faith, A or B? Okay, A. There we go, right? <clears throat> Faith is an abstract noun. Okay, there we go. What about um, fear of February 14? <laughs> What about fear of February 14? Okay, for those of you afraid of your Feb 14, stick to the end of the program. I have the good news for you, believe me. Okay, All right. It's an abstract noun. Fear cannot be seen, right? Although it can be felt, but it cannot be seen, okay? You cannot perceive it with your five senses, right? Okay, that's good. All right, and then we also have what we call the concrete nouns. Okay, so sir, what are concrete nouns? Okay, concrete nouns, guys, can be perceived with the five senses. Basically, the things that you are seeing around you, these are concrete nouns. For example, an iPhone, okay, roses, an Hermes Birkin, right? <laughs> I don't know. I get tickled when I say Hermes Birkin, right? Yeah. It becomes sexy, right? When you say that, Hermes Birkin. Hermes Picotan, <laughs> Yves Saint Laurent. <laughs> May sakit sa ano? May sakit sa panga pala, kaya hindi mapronounce ng tama. Okay. <clears throat> so what else? Uncountable nouns. <laughs> a lot of people. Okay, a lot of people tend, okay, tend to commit mistakes here, okay? A lot of people tend to commit mistakes here when it comes to your uncountable nouns, okay? Guys, when you say uncountable nouns, basically from the definition in itself, you cannot count them, okay? There's no way to count them one by one, not unless if it's your trip, trip. Diba yung trip mong bilangin yung magic sarap, diba? O kaya asukal, then why not? Go for it kung trip mo yan, diba? <laughs> okay, but... Look at this one, bread. You cannot count the quantity of flour and egg and, of course, the batter that goes into a bread for you to form it or for you to make it. So don't say, well, I have a lot of favorite breads. Okay? Who here has committed that mistake before? Right? I, well, I have a lot of favorite breads. Okay? Milk. You cannot count milk, right? What else? Water, air, gas, okay? Sugar, okay? Rice, oil. Food. Oh, Sir Joseph, I thought there was a word that is foods. There are a lot of uh, there are a lot of foods that I love. No, okay, mga anak. Okay, food only has an S. Okay, because basically the rationale behind this is that you cannot count the number of food available worldwide. Okay, the cuisine, the cultural food, the types of recipes, the ingredients that are available for you to <clears throat> make that particular food. So guys, you cannot say foods. Okay, sir, I saw, I, saw, uh, I saw a post. It says Korean foods, Filipino foods, spicy foods. That's the time that you're going to be adding an S if it has a specific categorization. Okay, if the food, in, if you're talking about the food in general, Let's say there are a lot of food that I love. Okay, so basically, don't add an S on them. Okay, but if there's a specific category, for example, spicy foods, there you go. Korean foods. Okay, that's the time that you're going to be adding an S. Okay, all right. So no words such as as such as gases. Uh, actually, they just they just used it to quantify scientific definition, anak. Pero as on the English rule, we do not agree that there's such thing as gases, no? Because uh, although there are types, maybe they're pertaining to the type, but not the matter in itself. Okay. Or right, yeah, foods, guys. Be careful with that one. Okay. This is the number one mistake that the students tend to do or say on the examination is that there are a lot of foods. Okay. If there's a specific category then you should be saying Korean foods. There you go. But, okay, when you, when you meant there are a lot of food, then don't say foods, okay? There we go. 
noble gases, mga ganern, 'di ba? Oo, yung mga noble gases, 'di ba? I think they 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 just made it an ES for the type of the gases, right? Pero you basically cannot count gas, no? So they just made it a quantifier for the type of gases available there is worldwide. Okay? All right. So fish. Mm. I saw stu- I heard students before say this, no? There are plenty of fishes in the ocean. <laughs> mga anak, when you are saying fish, okay, just say there are plenty of fish in the sea. Okay? I love eating a variety of fish. Okay? Do not say I love eating a variety of fishes. Okay? Because fish cannot be counted. Even the depths of the ocean has never been explored. So we cannot say fishes. Okay? Just say fish. Okay? So one thing, okay, that you would need to remember is to never add an S on them. Okay? Now, <clears throat> let's say water. Okay? Let me just drink some water. Okay? Look at that. Let me just drink some water. Is that correct or incorrect? Come on, guys. Let's test our grammar skills tonight. Let me just drink some water. Is that correct or incorrect? Okay, some water. Okay, some water. Let me just drink some water. Basically, <clears throat> that is incorrect. Okay, you need to say Let me just get a glass of water or let me just drink a glass of water because the glass there is the quantifier of the amount of the water itself. Okay? When you say some water, you cannot just take a few, um, what do you call this, strands of water or pluck out a few drops of water and then take it for yourself. Okay? So guys, don't say, let me just drink some water. Just say, let me just drink a glass of water. There we go. That would be better instead of saying some water, okay? Let me just drink some water. Okay. Oh my gosh. Sir Joseph, it's time for it's first it's the first time for me to learn that, believe me. I was already 26 when I have learned that. <laughs> I always say I always say, "Hold on guys, let me just drink some water." Okay, and then one of my friends told me Oh, Joseph, uh, don't say some water because basically some is not a quantifier for the amount of water. Basically, it should be a glass of water, okay, or a pint of water. Do not say some water. Diba? OMG, same here. <laughs> See? <laughs> okay, do not say <clears throat> some water. Okay, now, collective nouns, guys, they are made of two or more smaller nouns, okay? Okay. Um, a collective nouns is a group of things as a whole. Okay, you can say bunch, some, few, many, audience, okay, students. A school of fish is a collective noun. Okay, so we add a for a class of students. Okay, do not say there's class of students. There is a class of students because you're talking about a collection of students at about to attend one class, okay? All right, now I know, Odeva. Okay, now, <clears throat> what about compound nouns? Here's one thing that I would want you guys to remember when it comes to compound nouns. Is my voice okay when it's closer like this? Or is it better if it's far away like this? Closer, farther. Closer, further. Which one would you want? Closer. Farther. Close daw para intense. Di ba pag tumawa ako? <laughs> Gising kayong lahat dyan. <laughs> okay. So, guys. For compound nouns, here's one thing that I would want you guys to remember. Okay? Compound nouns. One noun plus one noun or another noun that is a compound noun. Okay? It is a noun that is made of two or more smaller nouns. Okay? So, you have noun plus noun or noun plus noun plus noun. Okay? An example of this one is Sister-in-law. There you go. Sister and law. They're both nouns. Schoolboy. School is a noun. Boy is a noun, right? Fruit juice. Fruit is a noun. Juice is a noun. When you put them together, diba? remember M, remember E. When you put them together, remember me. <laughs> When you put them together, they become a compound noun. Okay, from Rodora. OMG, a glass of water pala. Thank you. You're welcome, Rodora, my love. <laughs> Closer. Okay, there we go. 
<laughs> Closer para dinig lahat. Nakakapanibago, Mike Master. Di ba? Blessings to ni Lord. Di ba? Lord, thank you. Ilang taon kong pinangarap to. Alam mo yan. <laughs> okay. So, uh, let's talk about some of the rules for nouns. Guys, if that is a singular noun, okay? You have to know that it's just an uh, it's just one, okay? There should be no S, okay? Uh, it's just one. For example, a cactus, right? Cactus. Okay, there you go. So, a book or a boy, okay? Whereas for plural nouns, it's more than one. Cacti. There you go. Books or boys, okay? Basic rule. Okay. Sir, I know verbs. Hello. I know what verbs are. Verbs are the things that fly in the sky. Sometimes they poop on your car. <laughs> Hindi na gets. <laughs> Birds. <laughs> I love verbs. I if I can if I can look at verbs all day, I will be looking at verbs all day. There are many types of verbs, big verbs and small verbs. I love the big verbs. Hoy, <laughs> dako. Energy drink pa, Joseph. Okay. <clears throat> so guys. Okay. How many of you, okay, when I ask you about the definition of verbs, what are verbs? Come on. Could you please type your answers there? What are verbs? Okay, type your answers right there. What are verbs? Okay, ayan na. Sige, mga anak, action words. Sige, ano pa? Come on. Ano ito? Sir, me, I love long verbs. Oh, long verbs are good too. Especially the transitive variety. <laughs> Okay, verbs are action words. Okay, if you have answered action words, we have been poisoned when we were younger, okay? When they were teaching us about verbs, okay? Uh, they say they are action words. Basically, hindi naman tumatambling yung mga salita na yan, mga anak. Hindi rin yan kumikembot o tumatalon. So you cannot call them action words. They are words which denotes an action. Okay, you better start teaching that to your children right now, okay? If they ask you, Mama, what's a verb? Ganun ka arte yung anak. Ano? Mama, <laughs> what's a verb? Well, enough. Verbs are words which denotes an action. Okay, that would be a more accurate definition for that. Okay, verbs are words which denotes an action, not action words. Okay, because if you say action word, halimbawa, ito yung word, no, to matambling tambling yan. O kaya nagi split yung word na yan. Tapos may nakalagay charan, ni ba? So guys, be careful. Okay. <clears throat> When you were asked about verbs, what are verbs by definition again? They are words which denotes an action. Okay, so let's take a look at the first type of verb, okay? We have the transitive verbs, okay? So when you say transitive verbs, it is a spe uh, the specific object on which or for the action is being performed, okay? When you are using transitive verbs, guys, so, uh, there should be an object on which the action is being performed. Let's take a look at this example right here. Joseph is writing on his notepad, okay? The transitive verb here is the word writing, whereas the notepad is the object, right? Writing, notepad, okay? Let's say Joanna is typing on her computer, Okay, Joanna is typing on her computer. So typing, that is the transitive verb and the object is her computer. Okay, so here's another one. Hannah is painting on the canvas. So painting is the transitive verb and the canvas is the object. Okay, that's where she's doing the painting. Okay, there we go. All right, or let's say... Um, uh, who the action is for, right? Genji is coaching for Joseph. There you go. Genji is coaching for Joseph. There you go. So basically, Genji is coaching for who the action is for? Joseph. There we go. That's transitive verb, okay? You have to remember, guys, when we're talking about transitive verbs, they should have an object on which or for the action is being performed. 
Whereas for intransitive verbs, okay, there is no specific object, okay, or there's no specific time. Okay, look, uh, there's no specific object or there's no specific location on where they're doing the action. Okay, here's an example. <clears throat> Joseph is writing now. So it, is, it, it, it did not state here where I am writing, right? Where I'm writing on, right? Joseph is writing now. Where is Joseph writing? Is he writing on his uh, tablet? Is he writing on his face? Is he writing on his seatmate's face? Okay. Or observe that this sentence did not state where Joseph is writing. Okay. Let's say another one. Um, Joseph is teaching at the moment. There you go. Joseph is teaching at the moment. I know it stated when Joseph was teaching, but it did not state where and what platform is Joseph teaching at, right? So Joseph is teaching at the moment, then teaching becomes an intransitive verb. Now, for you to make it a transitive verb, so Joseph is teaching on his tablet, there you go, then that will become a transitive verb kapag ka meron ng object, mga anak, okay? Ganito lang yan. Very simple, okay? Very simple. If there's an object, that is a transitive verb. If there is no object to which or whom the action is performed on or at, then of course, basically, that is an intransitive verb, okay? All right. Oh, 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 Mama G, I'm learning. I'm learning right now. That's good. Okay. That's our goal is that so it's that when you're done with this lecture tonight, okay, you will get to face the exam confidently because you know that you have just the, the essential skills that you would need for grammar. Okay, let's talk about dynamic verbs, okay? What are dynamic verbs? Okay, so dynamic verbs, action that is done by the subject, okay? A dynamic verb is the action that was done by the subject. The subject, guys, you have to remember, is usually a noun or a person, okay? So here, Joseph teaches the class daily. There we go. So Joseph is the subject here. The dynamic verb is the word teaches, okay? What else? Kiara buys new bags weekly. Na all, Kiara, bumibili ng bagong bag linggo-linggo, ha? Huh? <laughs> okay. Kiara, okay, Kiara is this, oh, I erased it. Kiara is the subject here and the dynamic verb is buys. Okay, you're welcome, Amir Raz, my love. Okay, here we go. Kiara is the subject, buys is the dynamic verb, okay? So basically, when you say dynamic verb, it denotes the action of the subject, okay? Here's another example. Uh, let's say, Johanna studies for her, uh, prepares for her IELTS daily. Johanna prepares for her IELTS daily. There you go. So Johanna is the subject, prepares is the dynamic verb. There we go. Okay, next one, guys, is we do have what we call the stative verbs, okay? So basically, when you say stative verbs, this tells you about the subject's emotion, Okay? Tells us about the mind or emotion of the subject, okay? These are stative verbs, okay? Here, Mama D loves his students. Mama D loves his students. Parang ironic clause naman yata to. Mama tapos his ironic. <laughs> what? I am an exemption to the rule. <laughs> okay. Look at that. Mama D loves his student. So Mama D is your subject. The stative verb here is the word loves. There you go. Mama D loves his students. Okay. Another one. Carrie loads the speaking test. Okay. Carrie loads the speaking test. So Carrie here is your subject. Loads is the stative verb. Okay. There you go. So guys, <clears throat> One thing to remember with stative verb is that it gives you a direct idea about the feelings or the emotions of the subject, okay? Could you please give me an example, okay, while I'm discussing the linking verbs, okay? Could you please give me an example for stative verbs? Come on, guys. Let's get those fingers working. May sasabihin sana ako kaya lang ano, rated SPG. Munti ko lang sabihin. Ang susunod na programa ay may temang hindi angkop sa mga batang nanonood. Okay. I hate grammar. Char. There you go. See? Hate is your stative verb. I know you well know. That's good, Dr. Hayel. How do you pronounce your name, my love? That's so interesting. Hayel? 
hail. I love your smell. Thank you. Hail ano ba? Okay. So, let's take a look at the next one. Let's talk about the linking verbs, okay? So, basically, guys, these verbs are used to connect a subject to a noun or an adjective, okay? These verbs, okay, uh, I feel eating rice. Yeah, I feel like eating rice. You can say, I love eating rice. Okay, hi, Mama D, good evening. Hello, Ross, my love. Mama nurtures her children. There you go, Mama is the subject. Nurtures is the stative, uh, the verb. Okay, <clears throat> Mama D, imagining the verbs. <laughs> <laughs> I love verbs, okay? All right. <clears throat> so let's take a look at the linking verbs, okay? The linking verbs, guys, usually this is is and are, okay? Most common form of the linking verb is is, are, was, and were. <laughs> okay, so if you're going to be looking at this one, guys, these verbs are used to connect a subject to a noun or an adjective, okay? Look at this one. Emily is fuzzy about food. Emily is fuzzy about food. So Emily here is your subject. Fuzzy is the adjective. Is is the linking verb. The next one. The children are eager to learn. The children are eager to learn. Okay, so the children is your subject. Eager is the adjective. And then, okay, are is the linking verb. The food is comfort for those of... Uh, the food is comfort. For those abroad, not comforting, okay? Comfort, it's it's comfort in itself, okay? It becomes a noun, right? The, the food is comfort for those abroad, okay? The food is comfort for those abroad, meaning the food became comfort itself, okay? It's not comforting. So the food here is the subject, is is the linking verb, and comfort is the noun. There you go. All righty. Now, Let's take a look at adjectives. <sighs> okay. Kaya pa, guys? Okay, let's wake, those, uh, let's, let's wake those neurons up, okay? Ready? Do this with me. Come on. <clears throat> if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Okay. Yung mga pumalakpak daw po, papasa ngayong taon. Very good. <laughs> okay. All right, so, naku, parang hindi yata pumalakpak ka. Pati anak ko po nag-clap. O, oh, diba? Oh, sabi ko sa inyo eh. Sino hindi nag-clap? Ano to, sir? Isa pa. Okay, o, oh, sige ha. Magka-clap, guys, ha? Okay, ready. <clears throat> If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Bida ang saya. Charin. <laughs> <laughs> may ano? May padulo? Okay. <clears throat> Hello, Victoria. Victoria. Okay. So let's talk about adjectives. Okay, adjectives. All right. So adjectives are words uh, are, are words used to describe nouns. Okay, any shape, size, quality, quantity, or the make of a noun. The Filipinos are really good with adjectives. Believe me. Okay, because especially those who we call here in the Philippines, okry, like those people who are really good with okry, okry, they actually describe people very, very well, right? So when you are describing people, things, places, or events, basically when you're describing nouns, you're going to use adjectives, right? Maraming Pilipinong ganyan, di ba? Yung pagka ng, ng okray, ng kapwa, daming adjectives sa sinasabi. Okay, so, an example of this one is smart lady. There you go, smart lady. So, the word smart is the adjective, lady is the noun. Basically, the adjective describes the noun itself, okay? So, there are adjectives that are pertaining to attributes, okay? First, that's big, small, scrawny, or strong, right? Okay, there you go. These are attributive adjectives, okay? We also have what we call the predicative adjectives, which are usually talking about the emotions of the noun, okay? You have happy, 
joyful, crestfallen, and scared. Oh, Sir Joseph, there's a word there. What is that word? What does what does this word mean? Okay, crestfallen is that you're 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 extremely brokenhearted or sad about something. Okay, all right. What about this one? Could you please tell me the meaning of this word? Okay, what's the meaning of this word? <clears throat> There you go. What's the meaning of that? Don't Google it. Don't Google it, okay? You want to know the meaning of this word? Do you want to know the meaning of the, do you want to know the meaning of this word? Furtive? Secret. Secret. What? That's the meaning of the word. It's secret. <laughs> furtive means secret. Okay, it's a furtive. There you go. That means secret. <laughs> you thought I'm not going to say it, right? <laughs> furtive means secret, guys. Okay, the meaning of the word furtive is something that is kept or it's a secret, okay? <laughs> oh, Yes, the meaning of the word furtive is a secret. There you go, furtive. Hi. Okay, <clears throat> so we also have nominal, okay? Nominal adjectives. Nominal, you have new, old, or long-standing. Okay, there you go. So my relationship is long-standing. There you go. So the relationship is the noun there because basically it's a union between two people. That's what you call it. And then long-standing is the nominal adjective for that one. Okay. Oh, I see. All right, next one. Comparative, okay? For comparative, you have taller, smarter, stingier, Prettier. Nice one, sir. <laughs> oh. You can use that to your, you can use that with your friends, right? Do you want to know the meaning of the word furtive? Sure. What is it? Secret. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right. So what else? Comparative, guys. Okay. Basically, if there's a point of comparison, okay, that that's basically uh, what do you call this? A comparative adjective. Okay. He is taller. She is smarter than that person. He is stingier. Okay. When you say stingier in Filipino, we call it curry pot, right? There are a lot of curry pot, especially my fellow Ilocanos out there. Yes, they say that we are curry pot. And I do understand that's actually accurate. <laughs> No, no, man. As Ilocanos, we are not stingy. Maybe we just know how to value the money that we work hard for. I don't know. <laughs> I don't agree, diba? Pero meron mga Ilocano ngayon yung mga ano na. Meron mga Ilocano ngayon yung mga tawag dito. Yung mga bongga na sila ngayon, no? But during our time, yes. Our very frugal, diba? Ilocano kamutyante. Siya man. Puray shot. Okay. <clears throat> so, next one. All right. Next one, guys. We have uh, superlatives. Okay. Superlatives is the utmost forms. Sometimes, sabi ni Maribel. Yeah, me too. Sometimes. But sometimes, no. Okay. So, for superlatives, guys, it's the utmost form. Okay. One thing that you would need to remember for this one is the utmost description. Okay. This is the superlative. Okay. So when you say utmost, that is the tallest, smartest, or stingiest, okay? All right. So what about interrogatives, okay? Interrogatives, which, what, whose, and whom, right? Whose book is this, okay? To whom it may concern. <laughs> you are the best. Oh, thank you, Dr. Hayal. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Next one. Indefinite, okay? Indefinite. Indefinite is any, few, some, many. So, guys, you cannot use an indefinite, uh, an indefinite adjective to describe water, okay? Do not say, let me just get few water, okay? You cannot, let me just get some water or many water. Don't say that. It's not going to be matching, okay? There should be a quantifier, a glass of water. Okay. And, of course, for eponymous, we're talking about religion or faith itself, okay? Christianity, Muslims, Buddhists, there you go, Jews, okay? 
Now, oh my gosh, here comes the verbs again. Let's talk about adverbs. They describe the manner of the verb, okay? When you say adverbs, guys, they describe the manner of the verb. An example of this one is to read blissfully. There you go. Read blissfully. Read is the verb. Blissfully is the adverb. Okay, look at that, right? Okay. Parang ang saya, no? Pag grammar ang pinag-uusapan natin. Are we learning? Are we learning, guys? Yes or no? Tell me if you're learning or if you're not. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. <clears throat> You know what? My students know this. Every time that the topic is boring, I tend to make them laugh more because I do believe that when you're laughing, things which are not interesting makes it more in interesting to you. Right? It, it automatically becomes interesting. Okay. English 101. Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, guys. All right. <clears throat> okay. So let's talk about adverbs of time. Okay. So adverbs of time, I have written down examples here. We have already, ago, before, yet, near, never, yesterday, soon, and lately. Okay, lately, lately, learning because it's the basics. That's good, Harleen. Okay, more session, please. <laughs> okay, mag-alala. Sa susunod mga, dadagdagan ko pa mga grammar-grammar natin dito. Okay, all right. <clears throat> so, Next one, you have frequency, okay? Frequency is always, always, usually, seldom, often, normally, occasionally, once or twice, right? I visit them once a month. I, I, I attend church once a week. There you go. I always attend church. There you go. Or I seldom see people who are depressed. Well, yeah, no? Okay. Next one, <clears throat> place, here, there, Everywhere, right? <laughs> Nearby, down, up, and by. By the ocean. There you go. Glided by. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> All right. And then for manner, you have slowly, boldly, swiftly, loudly, and delightfully. Okay. And then for the degree, almost, partially, fully, enough. Almost entirely. Okay, look at this one. Where do you use these? I almost agree. I partially agree. I almost entirely disagree. Where do you use this? Okay, you use this for the format. To what extent do you agree or disagree in writing? Right? You use that for to what extent. So guys, please come up with creative adverbs, okay? For you to describe the extent of how much you agree or disagree about something, okay? By the way, guys, just a quick census for the viewers. Next week, uh, next week's discussion for IFNG, would you want me to describe, uh, would you want me to discuss about to what extent do you agree or disagree and advantage outweigh or advantage outweigh and discuss both views and give your opinion? Which one do you want? To what extent do you agree or disagree and advantage outweigh or advantage outweigh and discuss both views and give your opinion? Which one do you want next week? Because I want to, talk, I want to teach you guys about essays next week. Yes, that's the writing task too, right? Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, ikaw na bahala. Kung ano feeling mo makakaganda. Okay. Second option, right? Okay. The advantage outweigh plus discuss both views and give your opinion. Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay. So, next one, guys. Okay? Um, affirmation. Okay? Adverbs of affirmation. You have certainly, surely, apparently and obviously there we go okay these are adverbs of affirmation now <clears throat> both tatlong essay tignan natin guys kung kaya ng tatlong essay ha okay tignan natin kung kaya ng tatlong essay next week if i can teach you guys one s uh, three essays in one session or what we can do is we're going to be discussing two essay sessions then the following week another two essay sessions would that be would that be better for you guys so that I can discuss like four essay types? Vet nyo yon. Okay, if you vet it, type vetlihem. <laughs> You're welcome, guys. I mean, I just, 
that's that's knowledge, okay? Hindi ko ipagkakait sa inyo yan, mga anak, okay? I'll be teaching you about to what extent, advantage, outweigh, discussable views, and let's say open-ended, three, three prong questions, the difficult formats, okay? All right, sounds good. Okay, good. All right. <clears throat> oh, here we go. Let's talk about prepositions. I have a friend before. Please include your time ang mga schedule, sir. Thank you. Ah, yes, no? Oo nga, no? Sige nga, sige nga. Okay. Prepositions, guys. Okay? I have a friend before. Very smartly, she said, if you're not sure, just say in on at. <laughs> more choices of, more chances of winning. Like, let's say, I attended in on at the university. <laughs> Okay, so guys, you have to remember when we say prepositions. Thank you, Grace. Okay, vet na vet. Okay, Bethlehem. Okay, there we go. Good job. All right. So, okay, I promise. Okay, here at I of NG, I'll be discussing two two essay formats next week, and then the following week another two essay formats for my children who are watching at I of NG. Okay, but for now, let's focus about grammar. Okay, so prepositions. Okay, you have prepositions for time. And you also have prepositions for places, okay? You can use in, on, and at when you are describing time. And you can use in, on, and at if you are describing places, okay? So I have made a list here or a simple diagram. Okay, vet malu. George. Okay. I have this, I have made a simple diagram here which can guide you for your in on and at for time and place. Let's talk about time first. Okay. You have to remember, my children, that when you're using in for time, it is the widest time frame. Okay. It is the widest time frame. An example of this one is centuries, right? In the 1900s, in the 2000s. There you go. Okay. Or when you are talking about decades, like for example, in the 90s, okay, years in 2022, right? Well, I, I concur that it will be a banner year in 2022. Oh, okay. What else? When you're describing months, right? Like, let's say in October. In October, I will be arriving in the United States of America. There we go. Okay. What else? Weeks. In a week or in two weeks, the student is going to take his examination in two weeks, okay? Seasons in summer, in spring, in winter, in fall, right? Because there'll be no summer, spring, or fall. Each time is just a winter time. <laughs> Lyrics yun, diba? Was that a lyric? Is that a lyric of a song? Okay, <clears throat> Ang laban sa barangay ang bidyoke, di ba? There'll be no summer, spring, or fall. Each time is just the winter time. <laughs> Did you remember when we were younger? Right? When you're watching, like the elderly drinking, right? They're on their drinking session. There's a video karaoke like that. They sing like that, right? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> So what else? Okay, um, periods of time. Okay, in the past, in the present, uh, in the future. Okay, because in in the pre present, you're not going to use in. You're going to say at present or at the moment. All right. Okay, for holidays with the word holiday. Okay, remember this one. It get it gets confusing here, guys. Okay, when you say holidays with the word holiday. Okay, in the Christmas holiday, in the New Year's holiday. There you go. And for parts of the day, you're going to be using the word in. So in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening. Okay, there we go. Now, we use on for holidays with just the word day. Okay, so you have on Christmas Day. Okay, and sir, what if that is Christmas holiday? So if that is Christmas holiday, then you're going to be using in. In the Christmas holiday on Christmas Day. There we go. You're also going to use on for days, which are specific days or repeated days, okay? On Monday, on Mondays, or uh, Elite Intellect is open on Tuesdays to Saturdays. There we go. Okay, for dates, on the 14th of February. On the 14th of February. Okay, there we go. Ah, oh, on the 14th of February. Let's talk about this. Sabini Daffodil. Abby, here's the answer to our question, Abigail. 
Oh guys, what do you plan to do on the 14th of February? Is it going to be a holiday for you? Is it happy Valentine's Day or happy Independence Day? <laughs> Ha? Huh? May February 14 ba, sir? Wala. <laughs> diba? Oh, it's Grace's birthday on February 14. Happy birthday, my love. On February 14. Oh, you can just skip it if you would want, right? You can just jump right in to February 15, right? <laughs> Happy another study day. That's good. <laughs> okay. When's February 14? Is it this? When, when's the 14th? Anong araw yung the 14th, guys? Monday. Right? It's Monday. <laughs> Monday, wala na naman kayong makakainan kasi puno yung mga restaurant. Diba? Yung lalabas ka, tapos wala kang makainan kasi ang daming nakakopol shirt. <laughs> tapos pag naglakad ka sa si... Tapos pag ano, tapos pag naglakad ka sa mall, ang daming may bit-bit na bulaklak. Okay. Valentine's Day, magde-date kami ni Missy sa Freedom Park Mama Day. <laughs> Uy, sama ako, kain tayong fishbowl. Fishbowl at saka ano. Hanap ng reals, Mama Day. O, oh, diba? Oh, magtrabaho na lang kayo pag ganyan, ba? Diba? O, oh, ibangon natin ang ating mga kababayan. <laughs> Happy Independence Day. Don't worry, my children, okay? If it's not yet your time to find a husband or a wife, a boyfriend of a girl or, or a girlfriend, don't rush, okay? Who knows you're rushing, but then again, the Lord is creating or, or preparing a person that is more faithful, more handsome, or more beautiful and faithful to you that can help you with your development, diba? Basta alam ko lang, kay Lord may forever. Diba? Diyan tayo. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, specific days, right? Okay, for specific days, guys, here's an example. Let's say on your birthday, right? Or on their anniversary. There we go. For time, on the weekend, okay? For day plus part of the day. On Tuesday morning. I will be arriving there on Tuesday morning. We will be coming on Wednesday evening. There you go. So that's how you use on. Whereas for at, guys, at is used for specific hours, okay? So Um, at 3 p.m. There we go. For parts of the day, at dusk, at dawn. There we go. At midnight. Okay, for moment, at the moment. There we go. For holidays without the word day, at Christmas. Okay, ganito guys. For you to remember this one, okay? All right. <clears throat> Look, I'll write it down. Okay, so if that is, let's say, Christmas holiday, Okay, and then Christmas Day. Okay, and then Christmas. Okay, look at this one. All right, so for Christmas holiday, you're going to be using in the Christmas holiday. Whereas if that is Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. Whereas if that is Christmas, at christmas there we go right for you to remember in on and at pretty well for for your time okay waiting wait for the right person that's actually true that's actually true fully book ng hotels and okay all right now when do we use in on and at for place okay uh guys Stick around because after this, we're going to be discussing about your request. Subject, verb, agreement. Okay? All right. So <clears throat> let's talk about place. When do we use in, on, and at for place? Okay? We use in for the biggest areas. Okay? So you have in Africa or countries like in Africa or in the Philippines. Okay? We use it also for cities. Okay? Like in New York City. Okay? Mom Gladys is now in New York City. Okay, there we go. The new Elite Intellect office is in New York City, in Elmsford, in Mortimer. Oh, diba? Okay, 
we use it also for continents like in Asia or in Europe. There we go for neighborhood. Neighborhood guys, barangay sa atin yan. Okay? Sa mga Pilipino, we call it barangay. Okay? In Manhattan, in 312, in 556, in Quezon, in Mabini Homesite, in Mabini Extension, in Dapitan. Is there a Dapitan? Yes. In Dapitan. In Dapitan. On New Year's Eve. That's correct. Ano? Okay. All right. Next one, guys. We also have uh, um, class, okay, or classroom in class, right? Or in the classroom. Um, haven't you noticed when you inquire at Elite Intellect, you always hear, you always see me say this. See you in class. Oh, diba? Okay. What else? Private transport. Okay, guys. Private transport, you're going to be using in. Okay, if that is a public transport, you're going to be using on. For private transport, with the exemption of a bicycle and a motorbike, you're going to use in. Okay, I was in the car. I was in the van. I was on the plane, on the train, on the tramway. I was sitting on a motorbike or I was on the motorbike. Diba? Kasi kapag ka I was in the motorbike, nasa tambucho ka nung ano, motor. <laughs> Okay, I was in the bus. Anak, nasa makina ka ng bus. Diba? You are on the bus. Okay? <clears throat> so, when you're pertaining to private transportation, okay, basically, you're going to use in. I was in the car when you called. I was in the van. I was in the, I was in the private jet when you called. But, when do we use on? Okay? On is for streets, okay? I walked by, uh, I, I passed by, uh, I walked on Bradley Street. I walked on Bradley Street, okay? For avenues, on Fifth Avenue. There we go. For floors, on the second floor, right? Versace. On the floor, right? That's actually correct, right? Versace on the floor. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> What else? For surfaces, for example, on the table or on the floor. There you go. So guys, when you say surfaces, let's say this pencil right here. I did put it on top of my table, any part of my table. Then it means that it is on my table. Like let's say when I put it on my head, right? It's on my head at the moment, right? But if this is inside my brain, then this is it. This is in my head. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so what else? Um, public transport on the train and on the bus, okay? Motorcycle and bicycle on a motorcycle or on a bicycle. Any form of communication or media, for example, on social media, on Facebook. I saw Sir Joseph live on Facebook. There you go. I saw you on Manila Bulletin or I saw you on the newspaper. In my pocket because basically it's inside your pocket, okay? It's in my pocket. Okay, there you go. Okay, so yeah, when you're using connect communication, guys, okay, I was on mobile when you called. Okay, there you go. On mobile, on social media, on the newspaper, on the magazine. There you go. You're going to be using on for those, okay? All right, and then at is something that is more specific, okay? When we say it's something that is more specific, let's say addresses, right? Um, um, Elite Intellect is at 113 Mulberry Road, Bradley. There you go. Elite Intellect is at 113 Mulberry Road, Bradley. Okay, what else? Specific shops, for example, at Elite Intellect or at Red Ribbon, right? At Elite Intellect or at Red, Red, Red Ribbon. Okay, and places of treatment. A location with which you get treatments from. At the salon for hair treatments. At the dentist. At the clinic, right? Okay, now. I want you guys to try to answer this one, okay? Let me write something here. Okay? Okay, number one. Okay, this is number two and number three. 
Okay, come on, let's answer this. I bought it blank, red ribbon, blank the second floor, blank the mall. Okay, what's your answer for number one, two, and three? Come on, guys, let's do this. Let's do this. Come on, my children. You can do it, girl. You can do it. <laughs> okay. Okay, good job. Okay, good job, guys, right? I bought it. I bought it at... Okay, I bought it at Red Ribbon on the second floor in the mall. There you go. Good job, guys. I actually had a student before. His name is Patrick. Patrick Garcia. Sabi sa akin, sir, have you seen my umbrella? Sabi ko, no. Why? I think I left it on the floor. <laughs> on the floor. I, I think I left it. And I think I left it on the floor at Elite Intellect 9 in the classroom on the second floor. <laughs> so sabi ko sa kanya, no worries, Patrick. I already, I already, or I already, I got your umbrella. It is now on the sink at Elite Intellect 9 on the second floor. <laughs> diba? At least na practice. Okay. All right. So good job, guys. Good job in recognizing in on an app, okay? If you feel confused at any point within on an app, you can just refer back to this handout. Again, if it's your first time to watch here at IFNG, guys, you may like the page of IFNG later on and ask the admins to add you to the group chat because they will be sending you um, these handouts. But if you are already an elite intellect student, don't worry, mama will be sending this to your respective group chats, okay? We are going to be forwarding this to everyone, Okay. I think in ipinost ko na nga ito sa Elite Intellect eh. Mamaya makikita niyo yung post, okay? All right, guys. So, <clears throat> subject verb agreement. But before that, wait, let me just share to you something real quick, guys, okay? Real quick, okay? All right, before we move on to subject verb agreement. Happy Valentine's. Nasaktan ka na ba? Sa IELTS before? <laughs> Again, happy Valentine's. Nasaktan ka na ba sa IELTS before? Nagmahal, nasaktan, nag-USA yan. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. This is the Valentine's Day review promo of Elite Intellect Night, which is 50% off your unlimited IELTS review. Okay, so if you are single, then instead of paying 7,500, pay only 3,500 pesos for unlimited review. And if you're a couple, okay, if you're a couple, okay, if you are a couple or if you are, let's say, a group of friends. Okay, love is about friendship naman, di ba? If you are a group of friends, guys, then pay only 3000 per student. This is the new Valentine's Day review promo of Elite Intellect Night, which is 50% off your review. Para makabawi tayo sa pananakit ng mga tao na yan at ng IELTS na yan. Or para hindi ka masaktan ng IELTS examination. Okay, OMG, Sir Joseph, 50% off on your IELTS review. Okay, what are the inclusions? So this is unlimited IELTS review for life, okay? Even if you pass and your exam ex uh, your exam expires, you can still come back to Elite Intellect Night and re-review if you would want to. Free materials and free preparation book, free 800 writing compilation, unlimited one-on-one -on -one coaching and speaking and writing, unlimited one-on-one -on -one coaching with grammar, pronunciation, and vocabulary, free pre-assessment and final assessment with Mama D, unlimited computer mock delivered examinations, flexible schedule for international and domestic students. We also have the recorded uh, live classes so that if you are not available to attend your live classes daily, then you can rewatch the live discussions that is uploaded on the student portal. Plus, you have free exam scheduling assistance and free personal final coaching with moi, your mama D. Okay, so Sir Joseph, my gosh, the Valentine's promo is really good for IELTS, not just for IELTS, but also for OET review. Instead of paying 8,000 pesos for OET or occupational English test, pay only 4,000 pesos. Or for NCLEX and CBT, instead of paying 25,000, pay only 7,499. Unlimited review. <gasps> Sir Joseph. I want to avail of the of the IFNG Elite Valentine's Day promo. How can I avail? Okay, so if you're going to be looking at the comment section right there, 
Okay. Friends, join na tayo. 3K lang. PM me, sabi ni Arwin. Pwede rin yan. Sige, maggrupo-grupo kayo. Okay, if you're going to be looking at the comment section of our live here on Facebook, um, Genji Jimenez and Kyle Jalogoel has sent the link of Elite Intellect 9. Click it there and just type IFNG Valentine's. That is our promo code, okay? IFNG Valentine's, okay? Or if you are at Zoom and you're not yet a student of Elite Intellect 9, you may inquire for the, at those um, at the link that we have sent there on your um, uh, comment section on our um, chat box here at Zoom, okay? So guys, don't miss this chance of uh, getting 50% off on your final review, uh, on your IELTS review because we only have limited slots for this one. I think, I'm not sure if Mom Tanya is accurate. I think she will be accepting 20 to 25 students or 30 students only. So guys, please do a send a message to our Facebook page right now, okay? Or send us a message at WhatsApp that's 0916-697-2994. I'll see you in class, my children. Okay, hi, sir. <clears throat> Unlocking of these counter, Joseph. Yes. Kasi nga, alam ko naman na marami na sa inyo ang takot masaktan, di ba? Ayokong nasasaktan kayo sa IELTS, yung mga ganyan. So magpa-Valentine's promo tayo para masaya. Okay, guys. So, let's now continue about subject verb. Let's talk about subject verb agreement. Okay. <clears throat> oh, hold on, guys. Sorry. Let me just, uh, could you please give me like five minutes to drink water and for me to clean up my nostril area because it's building up with you know things in there so at genji while i'm drinking water any tips for them when it comes to grammar well hi everyone hello mother d but uh, before that i would like to say hi also to the ifng admin sir jeff mr m madame g sir manuel and my mitch and uh hello um 150 viewers of fd and um around Okay, 49 participants from Zoom. So this is your sister dragon, your Ate Genji. And before I continue, I would like to recognize my fellow coaches of Elite Intellect. They are here with us right now, our dear mom, Je, Je, Gani, Jerlyn Ganibe, and our baby dragon, Mom Zaya Suarez. Okay, hi guys. Thank you for coming in. Okay, so grammar, 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 the most dreaded subject of all. Uh, what tips can I share with you regarding this topic? Learn the basics, okay? According to our mother D, there are around 800 rules in grammar. So napakarabi po nun, hindi po natin kayang pag-aralan lahat. So let's just begin with the fundamentals of in, on, and at, then move on to a and the, and finally, the tenses and subject and agreement. So yun lang po, uh, because these are the usual mistakes that uh, we Filipinos uh, usually make, and that's it. So dun lang muna, kasi napakarami po nila para pag-aralan lahat. Okay, so back to you, Mother. Ayan, hindi pa yata tapos si Mother. But anyway, so I, again, I would yeah. like to say hello to Ma'am Je. And also to Mam Zaya, so my fellow coaches from Elite Intellect. Okay, back to you, Mother. Thank you. Thank you so much, Atige. Those are my ladies here at Elite Intellect. My ladies, no? My gosh, if you were if you are a student and you have been handled by Mom Genji, Mom Zaya, and Mom Jerlene and Mama D, believe me, <laughs> you're with the Power Puff Girls. Why? <laughs> bakit apat sila? Who among you do not know that there are four Powerpuff Girls? There are four Powerpuff Girls, guys. They're no longer three. You have Blossom, Bubbles, Buttercup, and Bliss. Hindi nyo kilala si Bliss? <laughs> the fourth Powerpuff Girl. <laughs> okay, guys. So, let's talk about subject-verb agreement. Okay, guys. So, for subject-verb agreement, guys, you have to remember the subject is usually the noun. Okay, and the verb is the action of the noun. These two should agree with one another, okay? So there are two golden rules when it comes to subject-verb agreement. Golden rule number one is, okay, singular subject takes the singular form. Oops, I erased it accidentally. Okay, takes a singular subject takes the singular form of the verb. You have to remember if that is a singular subject, it is on its singular form or it has no S at all. Whereas you're going to reverse that rule for the singular verb, you're going to be adding an S, okay? An example of that one is the student 
prepares for the test. The student is the singular subject. Prepares is a singular form of the verb. She teaches English. She is singular. Teaches is the singular form of the verb. Now, golden rule number two, guys, is when you have plural, uh, plural subjects, okay? Let's say when we are talking about plural subjects, usually, guys, they have an S, right? So the plural verb should not have an S. Oh, Sir Joseph, that's too basic. Later on, I'll show you the tricky parts. Okay, so <clears throat> here, look at this one. The test takers prepare their ID. The test takers prepare their ID. There we go. The educators focus on systematic ways. The educators focus on systematic ways. Okay, now, I'll give you an example for this one. Here. Okay, fish swim or swims in the ocean. Fish swim or swims in the ocean. Which one? Come on, if you remembered the noun earlier, which one do you think it is? Okay, fish swim or swims? Facebook, come on. Since there's no word ah, okay, if it says a fish, then of course that is swims. A fish swims in the ocean, right? But since fish, okay, we're talking about we don't know if that's plural, right? So basically, you're going to go for the plural form of the verb itself. So that would be swim. No? And sir, paano po kapag ka naging a school of fish? I'll show you. Okay? I'll show you down here. When we are talking about a school of fish. Okay? So, you guys already know the golden rule. Okay? Basically, golden rule one, singular subject, singular form of the verb. Singular subject do doesn't have an S. The singular form of the verb has an S. For plural subject, okay, it has sometimes an, an S. The plural verb doesn't have an S. Now, let's take a look at the other rules, okay? This is when it becomes a little bit confusing, okay? Let's talk about the first one, which is the collective rule, okay? Let's talk about the collective rule, okay? When a subject in a sentence comes before the word off, okay? You have to remember, when a subject comes before the word off, the singular form of the verb will follow, okay? The singular form of the verb will follow. <clears throat> okay, look at this one. A bouquet of roses lends color to the room. A bouquet of roses lends color to the room. Sir Joseph, what are you talking about? We're talking about roses, so why is it lens? It's supposed to be lend. I know. I know that the roses are a lot, right? But we're talking about a bouquet. Okay, a bouquet. So a bouquet of roses is the real subject there. So basically, it's just one bouquet. So you're going to go for the singular form of the verb. A bouquet of roses lends color to the room. Okay, here's another one. A school of fish. Okay, here we go. Look at, the, look at how it changed, right? A school of fish. We're talking about a school. It's just a collection of fish, right? So a school of fish swims in the ocean. A school of fish swims in the ocean. Okay, now, I want you to look at this and I want you to tell me what's the answer for this one. Look at the pink one. Okay. <clears throat> Let's have a look see at the pink one. A class of students study or studies for the test. Come on, my children, type in your answers right there. While you're doing that, let me entertain you. <clears throat> let me entertain you. Tell me. 
Ano? Ano daw? Ala ka kumanta. <laughs> Okay, so since we're talking about a class, okay, so the answer is studies. There we go. A class of students studies for the test. Okay? Pero, pag tinanggal natin mga anak yung class na yan, if we remove the word a class of, then it becomes study. Okay? The students Study for the test. Okay? Did you understand the collective rule and the plural, uh, the, the golden rule too here? Okay, good job, guys. Okay, tandaan lang. For collective rule, if it is a collection or a group, okay, it's going to be taking the singular form of the verb. Okay, good job. Now, here. Sir Joseph, what if there are two singular subjects? Okay, two singular Subjects. Okay. This is what I call the one plus one rule. Okay. Here we go. One plus one equals two. One subject is singular. One subject is plural. But if you combine them together, uh, one subject is singular. But if you combine them together, they will become plural. Okay. When two singular subjects are connected with or, either, neither, and nor, Okay, it will take the singular form of the verb. Ay, mali pala to. No? Or pala ito. Okay, or. Okay, this is the or rule. Okay, so you have one or one. Okay, it's either this one or this one. So this one is singular and this one is singular. So either of them will be uh, followed. Okay, look at this one. Carrie or, Tori, or, Carrie or Tony helps today. Carrie or Tony helps today. Either my cousin or my aunt arrives today. Either my cousin or my aunt arrives today. Because you're not sure if it's your cousin or your aunt who will be arriving today. For the first example too, you're not sure if, if it's Carrie or Tony who will be helping today. Okay, look at that. That is an example of the two singular subjects connected, connected by an or, or the word or. Okay, so sir, what's the next one? Okay, when there are two subjects in a sentence, okay? When there are two subjects and the sentence begins with either or neither, okay, look at this one. The beginning is either or neither, either or neither. Okay. All right. We have a question here. So a group of students is plural. That's the singular form of the verb. A group of students prepare, prepare a group. So we're talking about one group. We're talking about the group anak, not the students. Okay. So we're going to be looking at the singular form of the verb. Okay. Look at this one. <clears throat> if it begins with either or neither, okay, the subject closer to the verb will be followed again. If it begins with either or neither, the subject that is closer to the verb will be followed. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Neither the plates nor, nor the serving bowl go or goes to the shelf. Uh, Sir Joseph, asan po yung verb dyan? Yung verb mga anak yung go at saka yung go. Yung go, right? Or goes. Okay, what's the subject that is closer to the verb there? What's the subject that is closer to the verb? Is it, is it the plates or is it the serving bowl? It is the serving bowl, right? So what's the answer here? Neither the plates nor the serving bowl goes to the shelf. Good job, guys. Okay. Either Joseph or the students attends or attend the competition. Either Joseph or the students attends or attend the competition. Okay, very good. Oh my gosh, I'm so proud of you guys. You're learning real quick tonight. Okay, so the subject that is closer to the verb here is the students, right? So that's plural, okay? So we're going to follow the plural form of the verb, which is the word attend. 
either Joseph or the students attend the competition. Okay, good job. All right. So what's the next rule, Sir Joseph? Okay, the next rule is two subjects connected by the word and. Okay, this is our one plus one rule. The one that I was illustrating to you earlier. One subject plus one subject equals two subjects, right? One plus one equals two. All right. Pero kung sa Valentine's Day, wala kang ka plus one, okay lang yan, anak, tumatag ka. <laughs> okay. When two subjects are connected by and, then the plural form of the verb will take place. Okay, look at this one. A book and a pen. Okay, so you have book, pen, and it is connected by the word and. Okay, help or helps with learning. A book and a pen help or helps with learning. What's the answer? Help or helps with learning? It is help without the S. Because when you put them together, right? When you put them together, a book is one, a pen plus one equals two. It becomes plural. So the, sub, the, the, the verb will be the plural form of the verb. Okay, both reading and writing becomes or become onerous on the test. Both reading and writing becomes or become onerous on the test. Okay, good job. It is become. Okay. Now, <clears throat> next one. The car or bus arrive or arrives on time. The car or bus arrive or arrives on time. The car or bus arrive or arrives on time. Yeah, gagaling. You cannot trick them. <laughs> it is arrives. Why? Why, Sir Joseph? Why, why, why is it arrives? Because it's connected by or, not end. Right? It's connected by or, not end. Okay? Did you see now the importance of that one? If that is connected by an or, then you're going to take the singular form of the verb. However, if it's Connected by and, you will take the plural form of the verb. See? Good job, guys. Good job. <laughs> Akala ko ba hindi kayo marunong sa grammar? But ang gagaling nyo. I love it. Okay. Now, next one. Let's take a look at subject separation rule. Okay? So for subject separation rule, guys, when two subjects are separated with the word along with, as well as, besides, ignore the second subject. Okay? So look at this one. We have two subjects here. Okay? Joseph, along with the students, enjoy or enjoys the class. Joseph, along with the students, enjoy or enjoys the class. Oh, you're welcome, guys. You're welcome. I'm happy to be sharing uh, this one with you guys. Okay, so look at this one. The second subject here are the students, right? These are the students. So what I would want you to do is to ignore this and follow the true subject, okay? In this case, the true subject is Joseph. So your answer is enjoys. Good job. Okay, next one. The students, as well as the teacher, prepares or prepare for academic words. The students, as well as the teacher, prepares or prepare for academic words. Uh, the students, as well as the teacher, prepares or prepare for the academic words. Hi, EJ. EJ, my love. Yes, uh, they will be sending you guys a copy of this one at IFNG if you're already part of the group chat. But if you're an elite student, I'll be sending you guys a copy of this one on your group chats. Okay. It is la, la, la. Okay. The students, as well as the teacher, prepares or prepare for academic words. The teacher here is the second subject, right? The teacher here is the second subject. So basically, you are going to be ignoring the teacher. 
The true subject here are the students. So the answer for this one is the word prepare. Okay, there we go. Good job, guys. Okay. Ano to? From Nanya. <clears throat> From Nanya. I'm loving this class. Must clear and easy to understand. Oh, you're... Thank you so much, anak. Thank you. I try to make it... Um, Oh, kasi ano eh <laughs> tawag dito ano kasi kung bata no nag-aaral ako hindi ako matalino mga anak so I try to simplify things for myself and I do find it effective when I simplify things for the students too and I'm happy that you guys appreciate that thank you so much okay so look at that right look at that These are just some of the grammar rules that you would need to use on the examination for you to get that 7.0 and above. Okay, guys. So don't you worry, okay? We're going to be formulating more grammar classes for you here at IFNG. Maybe the next time we can talk about the punctuation usage. Yung mga yan, no? Mga tenses. Sige. Pero for next week, we will be discussing about writing, task two, okay? Essays, okay? To what extent, advantage outweigh, discussable views, and open-ended questions, okay? All right, guys. So, let me just share this one, okay? Most importantly, give thanks for the God of heaven. Uh, give thanks to the God of heaven. His love endures forever. Diba sinabi ko sa inyo kanina, don't try to look for your forever here on earth because nothing lasts forever here on earth. That is accurate, my love. There is, so, there is such thing as a lifetime. If you would want, let's say, a marriage lasts a lifetime, but there's no such thing as forever. Only the Lord's love endures forever. This is from the book of Psalms, chapter 136, verse 26. Okay, so quickly, guys, let me just pray for you guys who are attended our class for tonight. Heavenly Father, we'd like to thank you, Lord God, for another opportunity for us to share your word here at IFNG and, of course, to teach the students when it comes to their grammar. Father, here we are praying for the students who are watching this right now who are, or for those who are about to watch this, for you to guide them towards their preparation because you know, my Lord, that they need this examination. Lord, I pray for the admins of IFNG for you to always bless them, provide for them, and protect them as well as of course their families and my lord thank you for the new students that you have guided towards the way of elite intellect nine in jesus name amen okay guys so thank you guys so much Miba, sabi ni Charmaine, grabe learning is fun pala thank you mama dear welcome red okay from Charmaine, wow naging clear sa akin ang rules thank you and god bless always okay guys so next week friday Same time, 9 p.m. PHT, I will be live to teach you about the rules of writing, okay? So, for those of you who still want to avail our 50% off, mga nasaktan sa IELTS, so ayaw masaktan sa IELTS, no? For single students, that's 3,500 only instead of 7,500. And for couples or group friends, no? Okay, that's only 3,000 per student. Um, un Unlimited review na po yan, okay? For OET and Antrex, we also have promos. So if you would want to avail of these promos, you may send a message to our Facebook at Elite Intellect 9, okay? So you're going to be seeing the link that will be sent there on your um, comment section here at the video and also at the, uh, what do you call this, at the... <clears throat> at the chat box of, elite, of of the Zoom meeting, okay? So for those of you guys who will be availing of the Valentine's Review promo, I will see you in class tomorrow. Agad-agad, okay? So again, before I return this one to the admins of IFNG in behalf of Sir Jello, Mom Zaya, Mom Tanya, Mom Char, Mom Jerlene, Mom Genji, and Sir Lloyd, this is your Mama Dragon sending my love thing from the Philippines. I'll see you guys next week for another fun and informative class here at IELTS Filipino Nurses Group brought to you by Elite Intellect 9. Bye guys, have a great day and I'll see you in class very, very soon. Back to you, admins! Hi, Mama D. Thank you so much for delivering such a wonderful lecture to our members and a lot of a lot of discounts and what what is this a review promo for valentine's i love it yes all right that's for those so, who, yeah. doesn't, who doesn't want to get hurt on the ielts <laughs> uh, okay okay so we understand and i we and in behalf on behalf of ifng the admins and our members we love you all so much i love you kiss kiss mwa mwa chup chup bye everyone bye guys god bless <laughs>